everybody, welcome back to In the Kingdom. Here I am, once again, coming to you from my vehicle um, with another Passover video. Like, what is up with that? And what was up with my hair in that last video? It was like, bad Irish hair day. Anyway, uh, my kids are playing at the skateboard park and I'm just sitting in my car. I thought, well, here, I have time right now to make a video about Passover prep. <laughs> To prepare for your own Passover, the first thing you want to do is figure out how many people are coming to your Passover. I personally think I have like 16 to 18 adults and 10 to 12 kids, something like that, that's going to descend on my house. So I want to make sure that I have enough um, booklets for them and enough, um, we're planning some things for the kids. So number one, who all is coming? Who is on your guest list? Number two. Once you figure out who all is coming, you need to have a location. Mine will be at my house, um, but if you plan to have a super large gathering, maybe you want to have it someplace else. And number three is to plan your menu. We will actually be doing like a potluck and makes everything so much easier. So I will probably only do potlucks from now on where everybody brings something and then there's always enough food for everybody if everybody brings something. But maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to host the whole meal and plan the whole menu. You do you. That's not me, but you do you. Number four is get your shopping list together. After you have what you're going to cook, you gotta go buy it, right? I need to get some stuff for appetizers because we're having our Seder kind of later in the day. And you know, it's there's this whole ceremony before you actually get into the meal. So I wanna have some appetizers on the table or something to keep everybody from getting hangry while they're waiting um, for the, the main meal to be served. You wanna have some kind of grape juice. My kids love sparkling grape juice for the special times or wine if you do wine. Another thing you're gonna want is matzah which is pretty much crackers. If you cannot get matzah crackers where you live, like I'm in a kind of rural area, um, they actually do sell matzah at our local Kroger's, but um, you can also use kosher flatbread, like pita kind of bread, you know, the, or like for enchiladas, you know, the, the flat, whatever that's called, that kind of bread. Another thing you're gonna want is a matzah tosh, which is, which is a matzah bag that holds your matzah. If you do not have a matzah tosh, you can also use napkins and like just put it napkins in between the three pieces of matzah. Or I've got a video down below of how you can make your own matzah tosh. Just a couple of um, placemats and you fold them over and you sew them up the sides or even just glue them, hot glue them up the sides. Boom, matzatosh, you have your own matzatosh. I'm gonna get make sure I have some toys or something fun for the kids to do to keep them also entertained during the Seder part, the ceremony part. And then you're gonna to want to have a prize for the child who finds the afikoman. Some other things that you're going to need for your Seder plate. If you don't have a Seder plate, you can just use like a platter and place some little cu custard bowls, the little tiny um, dipping bowls, you know. You'll want like six of those to make your Seder plate. I've got a video down below of how we've done that. That's all I've ever used. I've never owned an actual Seder plate still yet today. All that's in that video down below about how to host your Messianic or Christian um, Passover Seder. And another thing that you're gonna need is Heroset, which is like an apple relish. I was gonna try to make a Heroset video, but it's pretty much the same thing as this other woman makes. So I will drop a link to her video down below of how to make um, her Sephardic Heroset. And then some other things that you're just going to need to have for your Seder is a bowl and a pitcher for washing your hands and a towel for that. And you're going to need a Haggadah or a Hagida, however you want to say it. This year we're going to be using this one. Ah, can you see it? It's a Passover Seder. I got this one from um, Shorish David Messianic Synagogues. I'll put a link to his down below though. So I kind of edited ours. I added some stuff in. I took some stuff out. I changed the wording just to make it more personal to us and how we do it. He has like the whole the whole group saying things and I wanted to make it like the individuals each get to read something. So I changed some stuff in ours. Um, I think you can get his and edit it too if you want to or just use his. I really liked his. I, I like his better than the ones we've used any other year. So um, this is what we'll be using this year and I'll put the link so that you can get that too down below. That is called a Hagida or a Haggadah. It is um, your order of service. So it just kind of goes through. It explains the whole thing. You just kind of read along and it tells the story of redemption. 
It tells you when to drink the cups of wine. It tells you when to find the apicomen. It tells you all the things. So um, it really makes your, your service more orderly. So that's what I've been doing anyway. Cleaning the house, getting out all the leavening and all that stuff. I did not realize that I had a giant bag of pancake mix. So I like just made the whole thing. Like, I mean, it was a huge bag. So my kids are eating pancakes every day for breakfast this week. I just froze them and we're just eating them every single day. So I hope that you guys have a blessed and meaningful Passover yourself and that you enjoy it with your family or your congregation. Check out the links down below so that you'll know how to have your Passover Seder. Download this baby right here, I like this one. It's down in the links uh, in the description box down below. Um, check out my other videos about Passover. I love you guys. Be love, live for the kingdom to come.